Lord John. Chapter 9. The fifth angel sounded his trumpet, and I saw a star that had fallen from the sky to the earth. The star was given the key to the shaft of the abyss. When he opened the abyss, smoke rose from it like the smoke from a gigantic furnace. The sun and sky were darkened by the smoke from the abyss. And out of the smoke, locusts came down upon the earth and were given power like that of scorpions of the earth. They were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any plant or tree, but only those people who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. They were not given power to kill them, but only to torture them for five months. And the agony they suffered was like that of the sting of a scorpion when it strikes a man. During those days, men will seek death but will not find it. They will long to die, but death will elude them. The locusts looked like horses prepared for battle. On their heads they wore something like crowns of gold, and their faces resembled human faces. Their hair was like women's hair, and their teeth were like lion's teeth. They had breastplates like breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was like the thundering of many horses and chariots rushing into battle. They had tails and stings like scorpions, and in their tails they had power to torment people for five months. They had as king over them the angel of the abyss, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in Greek, Apollyon. The first woe is past. Two other wars are yet to come. Woes are yet to come. The sixth angel sounded his trumpet. And I heard a voice coming from the horns of the golden altar that is before God. It said to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. And the four angels who had been kept ready for this very hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. The number of the mounted troops was 200 million. I heard their number. The horses and riders I saw in my vision looked like this. Their breastplates were fiery red, dark blue, and yellow as sulfur. The heads of the horses resembled the heads of lions, and out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and sulfur. A third of mankind was killed by the three plagues of fire, smoke, and sulfur that came out of their mouths. The power of the horses was in their mouths and in their tails, for their tails were like snakes, having heads with which they inflict injury. The rest of mankind that were not killed by these plagues still did not repent of the work of their hands. They did not stop worshiping demons and idols of gold, silver, bronze, stone, and wood, idols that cannot see or hear or walk. Nor did they repent of their murders, their magic arts, their sexual immorality, or their thefts. There were some terrible guys here on earth yeah. that would not repent. <clears throat> okay, let's start over from the beginning of uh, chapter 9. And uh, the fifth angel sounded, and John saw a star fall from heaven to earth. What do you suppose that was? Again, as we talked about last week, probably a meteor or larger or whatever. But as these meteors, man catches them when they're way out, far away from the earth. And I think even now, God has a meteor from somewhere that's aimed toward the earth that will fulfill this scripture. It's not going to just come out of nowhere. Of course, God can do that. But uh, my personal feeling is that God has a lot of things aimed at the earth that we could not believe. And I think this is, is one of them. The bottomless pit was opened. And now this is, 
as we started with those seal judgments and now the trumpet judgments, they continually get worse. And the bottomless pit was opened and spoke as of a great furnace, so thick that the sun and the air darkened. Can you imagine that? This is worse than any uh, terror movie that you ever saw. It's smoke is associated with judgment or doom or torment. Uh, that's what's happening on the earth as this happens. Here they come, up out of the pit, a swarm of locusts. Hey, turn to Exodus chapter 10, verses 12 and following. Find that for me and somebody read it and the rest of you follow along. Many of these things God has already done in the past in some form or another. But it seems here in the book of Revelation that if he did it before, it's magnified here. It's, it's ten times worse. But let's read about this in, uh, in the book of Exodus chapter 10, starting at verse 12, going on through 20 and see what it says. Who will read it for me? I'll read it. And the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over Egypt, so that locusts swarm over the land, and devour everything growing in the fields, everything left by the hail. So Moses stretched out his staff over Egypt, and the Lord made an east wind blow across the land all that day and all that night. By morning the wind had brought the locusts. They invaded all Egypt and settled down in every area of the country in great numbers. Never before had there been such a plague of locusts, nor will there ever be again. They covered all the earth until it was black. They devoured all that was left after the hail, everything growing in the fields and the fruit on the trees. Nothing green remained on tree or plant in all the land of Egypt. Pharaoh quickly summoned Moses and Aaron and said, I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you. Now forgive my sin once more and pray to the Lord your God to take this deadly plague away from me. Moses left Pharaoh and prayed to the Lord and the Lord changed the wind to a very strong west wind which caught up the locusts and carried them into the Red Sea. Not a locust was left anywhere in Egypt, but the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he would not let the Israelites go. Well, thank you, God. Uh, that sounds like a, a horror movie, doesn't it? But God did it before, and God will do it again multiplied ten or a hundred times whatever you want to, want I to think. I think it's also important to remember that this did not happen in Cochin, where uh, Israel lived. That's right. Uh, the plagues only happened in Egypt, and the Israelites that were left Egypt, but they're nearby, but the plagues didn't, well, no, they haven't left. They haven't gone into Egypt yet. Uh, but they were in the near vicinity, but yet it's like a patchwork thing. Here comes all of these locusts. And God says, you can land and torment the Egyptians, but right over here in the next field are my chosen people, the Israelites. You can't touch them. 
And so that's exactly what happened. The locusts and the plagues, they did their damage in Egypt, and the children of Israel were not bothered. So uh, let's see what happens here in the book of Revelation. So here they come up out of the pit, this mm -hmm. swarm of locusts like you have never seen before. Mm -hmm. uh, the worse than anything that you could ever even imagine. And of course, when these terrorists come in such a volume uh, that they shut off the light from the sun and so on, well, that's worse than any terror movie. It'll strike terror in the hearts of all of the people. Now, these locusts, they're not small. These are gigantic locusts. If you uh, would like to see one, they had crowns like gold, they had faces like man, they had hair like a woman, apparently long hair, their breast, the breastplate of iron, there was motion in their wings like a, you know, flapping a flying object, and it sounded like many horses running to battle. So they were very noisy. Uh, they apparently were very close together, or there was a, enough of them in the crowd, or cloud, or group, or what do you call a bunch of locusts? Hmm. Swarm. 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 Okay. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> the swarm was so thick that it shut off the light from the sun and so on. I have seen some swarms of bugs and things in there. You can't get rid of them. But this is ten times worse if it's gonna, if they're so thick that it shuts off the light from the sun. How about that? They had stingers in their tails like scorpion. And uh, when I first read this, years ago, it sounded to me like, here's a bunch of helicopters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I've heard that too. With the noise that they're making yeah. and so on. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I thought about that for a while and then they're coming up out of the bottomless pit, so I had to dispel that theory anyhow. And uh, these guys are scorpions. They're real live bugs that are after you. Wow. Oh, oh, oh. They were demonic spirits from out of the pit, is what they really were. And they are, or they were, they are, they will be. <laughs> we're looking at the future now. So vile that they obviously have been chained in the pit for centuries, hundreds, thousands of years. They've been chained there for this special purpose. Well, I guess there must have been a crack somewhere that left them out in the time uh, day of Egypt way back then <laughs> so that uh, they could uh, get out and do their damage. Their king, Apollon, is a great a, a Greek word for destroyer. Okay, a demonic angel in charge of the bottomless pit. That's who he was. Satan himself will be tossed into this pit for a thousand years. And we'll see that in, uh, in a few chapters yet to go. Uh, look at chapter 20 and verse 13. Before we get there, we'll just look at it today. Chapter 20 and verse 13. We're in the book of Revelation here. What does that verse tell you? 
And he gave up the dead who were in it. Death and Hades gave up the dead who were in them, and they were judged. Chapter Oops. 20, verse 13. Oh, I'm sorry. Instead of 13, it's verses 1 to 3. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I messed up again. <laughs> no, you didn't. I'm very good at that. <laughs> I'm probably better. Okay, now, uh, read verses 1, 2, and 3. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, holding in his hand the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain. And he sees the dragon, that ancient serpent, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years and threw him into the pit and shut it and sealed it over him so that he may not deceive the nations any longer until the thousand years were ended. And after that, he must be released for a little while. Okay, so the devil will be chained in this bottomless pit for a thousand years. After the thousand years, he'll be loosed for a little while. We'll talk about that later when we get there in chapter 20. But anyhow, back to these locusts. God put limitations on these locusts back in Egypt. They came and they ate up everything under the sun. But now here, God puts limitations on these locusts. You cannot hurt the grass. Hey, that's what locusts do, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, okay. Or, or any green thing. Well, that kind of puts limitations on them. You can't hurt any tree. The leaves of the trees. Uh, the leaves on the trees. You cannot hurt those that have the seal of God on them. In other words, uh, back a couple of chapters when we talked about that 144,000, God says to these locusts, you cannot hurt them. You can't touch them. You just touch these unbelievers that are there on earth. Those that are antagonistic toward God, that are fighting against God. Those you can hurt. But those with the seal of God on their foreheads, this 144,000 Jewish men, and there were probably some believers too that the 144,000 have converted by that time, uh, don't hurt them. Now, in verse 5, you cannot torment, no, you can torment them, but you cannot kill them. Huh. Boy. How long are they going to be tormented by these locusts? Five months. Five months. Did you ever get a bad sore or something that lasted for five months? Not very often. Well, I had this sore on my leg. It lasted for over a year before it healed up. But it wasn't like any bite from any locust. <laughs> but anyhow, they could torment them but not kill them for five months. <clears throat> this, this was so bad that the people that were stung by these scorpions they were in such agony that they tried to commit suicide. <laughs> and they couldn't even do that. That will flee from them, it says in verse 6. Each of these judgments that God is bringing upon the earth gets worse as they go by. And what I can't understand, these people are so against God 
that they wouldn't even listen to anything about repenting or changing their minds. So is it God that hardened their hearts, like God hardened Pharaoh's heart? Um, I think their hearts were already hardened before this happened. That's why they're still here on the earth. Uh, either way, their hearts are hardened and they refuse to accept anything that has to do with God himself. Don't, don't we see that even now, though, when people say, I could never believe in a God who, as they set themselves up as more merciful than God, or more just, or more loving. Or why does God do why this? Does, yeah, why yeah. would a loving God do, do this? Yeah, and, and I could see these people in torment from their, their scorpions things. Like, I'm not going to believe in a God who would do something. Good example. Satan can no, go no farther than God permits. Well, that's Job what is a good example of that. That's what he is saying here. God allowed the scorpions to do to go so far, but you can't. Mm -hmm. You can torment them, but you can't kill them. Yes. And, uh, so God has the final say in what happens. He, he did the same thing with Job. Uh, he took his family, he took Job's family and so forth, but he couldn't kill him. That's right. And then later on, when he was so affected with boils, again, God allowed him to torment, but he could not take his life. Right. So let's go to the sixth trumpet. We have to. Verse 13. The prayers of the persecuted saints were offered to God at this altar. Uh, back in chapter 8, verses not 35, but 3 to 5. <laughs> And we saw those saints and the prayers of the saints growing up. The judgment of the sixth trumpet is likened to these prayers. The wicked angels are loosed to carry out God's appointed wrath on mankind. Hmm. God has a precise time to do everything. Now, we, we don't know his time schedule, but obviously he has a time schedule when he allowed, well, he allowed on the fifth trumpet, he allowed them, scorpions, to torment for five months. But he has a period of time and during which to carry out the program of wrath on a designated portion of the people. Not on everybody, as uh, we've talked about that before. But now in the sixth trumpet, his goal is not torment, but death itself. So uh, the things have changed here. <laughs> Can you imagine an army of 200 million. But that's what it says. An army of 200 million demonic beings. Well, one demonic being is enough. But here we have 200 of million of them. The emphasis is on the horses. And they have power to kill. And they killed a third of the men that are left here on the earth. They killed them by fire and smoke and by brimstone with their tails like serpents. I find it interesting that he says that he heard their number. You know, after he talks about the two million mounted troops, 
I heard their number. Is there any significance in that? I mean, you'd think you would see rather, although I, I'm sure it was loud. It just well, interesting. Could you count 200 million? No, I don't think I could hear. But if someone <laughs> told you there were 200 million. Yeah, I might believe them. Yeah. Okay. So, um, the, the people that were getting tormented in the five months, that means that stopped. And so they didn't look for death anymore. Only a third were killed after that. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, I do. Okay. I'm thinking. Okay. <laughs> uh, a third of the men were killed. The rest repented not. But they weren't continue, continue being tortured? Well, I in, don't know. In verse 12 it says the first terror is past. Oh, mm. But look, two more terrors are coming. And, and they're, they're going to be more trumpet. Trumpet. Okay. Trumpet. So I would say the locusts were done based on that. But can you imagine after these scorpions have passed and it says and they repented not I get this picture of men here on earth screaming at God mm -hmm. not repenting but screaming because they are so angry that God did this not realizing that they deserved it and, and uh, that's what was coming to them because of that. The rest of the men that were not killed repented not. There was no contrition of heart. No confession of sin. No change of their conduct. Nothing seemed to change. No change in their beliefs. They remained defiant against God. Okay. And again, Pharaoh in Egypt is an example. Now turn to Second Thessalonians, the second chapter, nine to eleven. And let's see what that says. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 9 to 11. The coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with the work of Satan displayed in all kinds of counterfeit miracles, signs, and wonders, and in every sort of evil that deceives those who are perishing. They perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie. And this is what's happening here in the book of mm -hmm. Revelation. They're believing a lie. No sense of repenting in them at all. They did not repent. In fact, verse 12 in 2 Thessalonians 2 says, they delighted in wickedness. Yeah. Well, that describes again these unbelievers in the book of Revelation that are left. There is just no uh, repentance in them at all. And it's like the same thing. So many of these things uh, we wonder why would God or could God do that? Is he powerful? Well, he did it before. He did it to Pharaoh in Egypt, and so he can do it again. They did not repent of their idols of gold or silver or bronze or stone or wood, which cannot see or talk. 
I think that says a lot there. If you came face to face with one of these fellas, and he was worshiping an idol that could not move, that could not talk, that could not do anything. How does that compare with your living God that can do most, not most anything, can do anything, <laughs> put it that way. I had an interview this week with a Chinese, the young man from China. He was a, a student here at the present time. But one of the questions was about Christmas and what's the story of Christmas. Well, in the process of the conversation, he said that he and his family were Buddhists. That was their God. And so, can you imagine your God doing great things for you? And that guy with a little statue out in the backyard or wherever he keeps him, and it just stands there. You can talk to it, you can pray to it, you can do whatever you want, but it just stands there. It doesn't move, it doesn't do a thing. And that's the way these men were. They could not handle the true and the living God. And so they were very, very defiant. the very <coughs> demons that uh, they were worshiping are the ones now that were causing destruction upon them, widespread death. They were their objects <coughs> of worship before. So, uh, they did not repent of their wicked ways, their murderers, their sorceries, their fornication, their thefts. And I, there's one word there, their sorceries. And I would challenge you to look that up as much as you can and see, and you'll find that this word sorceries comes from a uh, a word pharmakia or drugs. Hmm. And uh, the way drugs seem to be taken over today, uh, it's going to be a bigger problem in the time when uh, all of these trumpet judgments are happening. Anyhow, it boils down to those without Christ during this time of the time of these uh, trumpet judgments. They're the ones that will suffer the wrath of God. The scripture clearly teaches now is the day of salvation. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2. Now is the day of salvation. Turn there and read it. I want you to see it with your own eyes. Apparently these unbelievers that were here at that particular time did not. Could you give the reference again, please? It is uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2. 
chapter 6 and verse 2. For God says, at just the right time I heard you, on the day of salvation I helped you. Indeed, the right time is now. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. Okay. Those who come to Christ today will not be exposed to these terrors of judgment <coughs> in the latter days of the trumpet judgments or the, the seal judgments that we looked at before and now the trumpet judgments and then coming up the bowl judgments the final set and that was the sixth judgment that we talked about and last week where was it yeah up here five when we should put a six and a seven let me do that <coughs> Okay, five and six today. And now the sixth judgment is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There we have the seals, here we have the trumpets, and then over here, bowls. Read that? No. That's all right. <laughs> yeah, take my word for what it says. So, uh, that's where we're at now. And we'll have a little interlude before we get to the uh, seven bowl judgments. There are a couple other things that we need to know, just like uh, after the uh, sixth seal judgments, we talked about the 144,000 that were sealed here on earth. Now we have another interlude where some things are happening here on earth, and that's what we'll begin to talk about next time in chapter 10. And we're almost to the halfway mark in this one. But we haven't got to the good part yet. <laughs> if you're one of the unbelievers, look out. The good news is there, but they don't accept it. So, uh, next week we'll be talking about uh, chapter 10 and what's happening here on earth while all of these other judgments are happening. Questions for today? I thought it was interesting the detail of the colors of breastplates. It was fiery red and highest bent blue and sulfur yellow. That is a lot of detail. That is. Uh -huh. And what does, it, what does it mean to you when you here, sulfur red. Wow. Fiery red. Yeah. Fiery red. Yeah, instead of saying red, blue, or yellow. Does that sound like a good yellow. fire? Yeah. Like a campfire? Mm -hmm. Or does that sound like something that you wouldn't want to be around? But I'd be, I'd like to be around hyacinth blue. <laughs> I see that. It gives you a feeling of intensity. These were not pastels. You know, they were intense colors. Yeah, and, and NIV says dark blue. Oh, that's, I'd like my eyes. <laughs> but it's more purple, I think. <laughs> colors mean a lot. And uh, when we read the entire verse and all of the colors, it demonstrates to us something that is not pleasant, something that's terrible, something that means doom and hurt, pain, that sort of thing. But uh, I'm 
sorry about your blue sweater. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, but do you think that shows that it's bad? That the colors are there? Like that? Well, they are the colors that God decided should be there. And they are colors that, uh, as we look at other places in the scriptures, it, it means death and pain and hurt and destruction. Wow. But that's all right. When you put your pretty blue sweater on, it, it means beauty and all of those good things. It means purity. I mean, Mary's always in blue, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Why do they use, you know, I, I can imagine fire and smell, but why sulfur? Because it smells so bad? Or? Sulfur is something that boils up out of the, out of the ground, mm -hmm. where these locusts are coming from. It's part of them. Okay. And, uh, like a volcano. <coughs> Think of those sulfur springs like at Yellowstone. Yeah. Where it's just kind of yeah. hot and Not smelly. smelly. Or if you've ever had sulfur in your drinking water. Some people do. Rotten eggs. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's what poured down on Southern Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. When I it foul. It does. It is foul. <laughs> when I look at these uh, judgments, mm -hmm. I think so often of uh, when I was down in New Zealand. Anybody been there? On the uh, New Zealand. Okay. You, but you're telling about. But we we traveled out to where uh, well into one place there was this whole lake. It wasn't a small pond. It was a lake. And it was boiling, and it was boiling all the time, and the mud around the seashore was bubbling and boiling, and it was, well, nobody would go swimming in that lake. Uh, it was terrible. And this happened more than one place. And they would drill into the side of the hill and they would go oh, these big 24 inch round pipes I'm sure they were that big maybe bigger and they would be taking live steam out of the ground and down over the hill to a generating plant and generating electricity there with steam right out of the ground well Compare that to what the book says when these scorpions are going to come up out of the pit. Uh, that live steam is just keeping those babies warm down there. So the time comes. Anybody else? Eight, 80 years ago, when I was a kid, 1936, the family went to a little town in, in uh, Nebraska where my parents grew up and there was wall-to-wall -wall grasshoppers. Mm -hmm. And whenever I, I hear about uh, uh, locusts, I remember that. Yeah. You couldn't walk on the sidewalk without going crunch, crunch, crunch. <laughs> I guess it was, they were very uh, destructive, but uh, to me as a 10-year-old, it was just interesting. <laughs> they, they didn't bother, I mean, grasshoppers don't bother you, I guess. They were eating the grass and the leaves and the, and the corn. And then the corn mm -hmm. and whatever. Well, not that far back, Steve, when I was visiting my daughter in South Dakota, 
man, that little town of Mandan, there were grasshoppers everywhere. They didn't cover the place. But I'm telling you, there were a ton of grasshoppers, and they were everywhere. That's exactly what it might be. A small sample of what it will be like when the scorpions come with stingers in their tails. And, uh, you could get a lot of chocolate. Have a feast. <laughs> Is that what chocolate, chocolate, chocolate covered grass? Oh, when you step on these, it's a little chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wanted to share with you that um, there's a little story that I heard about Jesus. Yeah, that's what I wanted to share. I wanted to share with you guys. Um, now, I was raised by people that hated God. They they felt he was evil, and I there's a poem that my parents had me memorize when I was a child that I wanted to share with you because I think this will give you, this will be the, the attitude, the defiance of the people that will not repent. Out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud under the bludgeonings of chance. My head is bloody but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade, and yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. And we memorize that as children to know that we were not going to give in to any god. We were the captains of our fate. But and you I, did. Well, well <laughs> what, what I found out later when I got the poem book for myself, and I must have been about 13 or 14 when I found it next to that poem was a Christian's answer of Jesus is the captain of my faith. He is the... And I remember reading that as a child and thinking, I don't want to be shaking my fist at the horrible evil of the universe. And I so wanted it to be true, but of course I knew it wasn't true. I knew there couldn't be a God. I knew that this worldview was right, and it, it took another 15 years for me to find out that, that in fact. Yeah. But these people that are here at this time, that's what they believe. They believe that they are standing in defiance of the wicked God and the, the chance that it's all, you know, a big accident and they're they're defying the winds of fate and they're proud proud of it and perishing mm -hmm. thank you Reverend. it makes me really sad i'm sorry <laughs> but I'm happy. well it should yeah. make us all sad when we read these things yeah. about people that are defying god mm -hmm. it should encourage us to spread the word yeah. and uh help some of those people that were so defiant or will be and, and help them to know mm -hmm. Christ that we know that they might love him as we love him that they might have the salvation that we have in Christ And he can, he can get to people in the deepest darkness who have been taught the greatest lies and his truth will still penetrate. Oh, here's the, okay, so here's the answer. Uh -huh. You look up the answer. Out of the light that dazzles me, bright as the sun from pole to pole, I thank the God I know to be for Christ, the conqueror of my soul. Since his the sway of circumstance, I will not wince or cry aloud. Under the rule which men call chance, my head with joy is humbly bowed. Beyond this place of sin and tears, that life with him and his the aid that despite the menace of the years keeps and will keep me unafraid. I have no fear, no straight gate. He cleared from punishment the scroll. Christ is the master of my fate. Christ is the captain of my soul. And I'm so thankful. Wow. And, and there's so many people that are in that other place of defiance. Thanks for letting me share that.
So that's why they call that thing a smartphone. Yeah. <laughs> well, and those poems are side by side in the poetry book. And my parents only read me the first one. But God showed me the second one. Anybody or anything else? Well, it would, it would seem in our schools we're teaching that there is no God when we're talking science and, and the Big Bang Theory and all of these things. We're trying to discredit the fact that there could be a God. <clears throat> Try. Professing to be wise, they become fools. But the lies will never satisfy. Mm -hmm. To any heart that's seeking, the lies won't satisfy. Well, there's still the question of who made no, they can't. Where it all started. So really, it takes more faith to believe in that yes. than it does to believe in Genesis. I also looked up sulfur because we were talking about sulfur, and it says um, on the facts about it in the science whatever website I looked at. Um, They've talked about how it's an element that makes itself known in the Bible 15 different times, mm. and that it's also referred to as brimstone in the Bible. And I had mm. never mm. made that connection that brimstone Fire in the was actually huh. sulfur. Mm. Mm. So, just information. <laughs> 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 okay. Thank you. Gavara was destroyed by fire, fire and sulfur is considered a part of that. <laughs>